Hello and welcome to the Exploratory. If you've ever built an API or used one, you know how important it is to explain to users how to use an API, even if it's your future self. In this video, we're going to explore API documentation in Postman. I'm going to be using Postman in my web browser. If you're following along at home, make sure you're logged in. Let's get started. So you can go ahead and begin by importing an API specification file like OpenAPI if you have one. But I'm going to close this modal because we already have a collection that we're working with here. It's a baby collection, only has two requests in it. I'm using a collection, and I'm also using an environment to store some credentials and other variable information that I want to stash over there. Let's go ahead and click on our collection. And this right context bar expands under the documentation tab. We can start browsing our documentation. Let's make it a little bit bigger by clicking view complete collection documentation. Okay, so here's some information about how to get this API workflow started. Here's a quick start. Here's some hyperlinks. Uh, here's a nice table of environment variables. And if I've never played around with Twilio's API, here's a screenshot of the API uh, console for Twilio where I can get my credentials. Let's keep scrolling. And here we have our first request in the collection. You can see the documentation mirrors how I have my collection structured. This is a get request called get Bitcoin exchange rate going to this address here. And if I keep scrolling down, I see here's an example or actually two examples. One illustrates a successful response and one illustrates a bad request. Uh, Postman will automatically generate code samples. So in this case, the API call is replicated here in Go, but if my app isn't in Go, I can go ahead and change this to something that maybe you're more familiar with. Let's pick Node request framework. So this code sample is automatically generated by Postman to replicate that first API call. And the other part of the example is what would you expect back from your server? So I haven't sent the request yet to this endpoint. I don't even have my API credentials, but I can already see what I can expect back from this endpoint. And then here we see our second request in this collection. So what is all this? Postman automatically generates some of the metadata that you have in your collection into readable, browsable documentation but there's a couple extra steps that you can take to make your documentation more consumable to your end user. So three things that I would recommend to you. The first thing we already took a look at is adding descriptions. So let's click back over to the collection documentation and this information here, you can click the pencil icon and you can see that it's formatted using Markdown. So these are hyperlinks formatted in Markdown, some bolding, some for formatting, Here's that beautiful table in Markdown format. And we can also see here's that screenshot of the Twilio console. So um, a little bit of extra embellishments, but will help your end user consume your API a little bit more easily. So the first thing is including descriptions. The second thing is including examples. So we already saw what that looked like in the documentation. But here's what it looks like in your collection. So we saw two examples. One was a successful response and one was a bad request. And you can load it up and you can see that all examples are are paired requests and responses. So you can see what you would all the different scenarios that you might experience with your server without actually going through it on your own. The second the second thing to do is examples. The third thing to do is we already saw that too is a get started. So in the very beginning of our um, documentation, you can see a quick start. Having a separate area, it could be a folder, it could be an entire collection, it could be a folder, but in this case, it's a section within the introduction that shows you how you can get up and running quickly. Those three things will go very far with your Postman documentation. So this is a public view of my documentation. You can see because this icon, this globe icon means that this is public. So if I sent you at home this URL, you would be able to hit this endpoint and um, take a look at my documentation. If I wanted to keep this private, maybe just between me and my team, or maybe for just me, I would control that accessibility by having this collection in a personal or a team workspace. In this case, it's in a public workspace, so anybody can access this. 
But what if I want more than just access? What if I want more people to discover my uh, collection? Well, what you can do is you can publish your collection to the API network. So here in the collection, I'm gonna go ahead and expand so I can see the documentation nice and big. And in the top right, this publish button allows me to configure the details for the Postman API network. So let's select a version. We actually only have one version, it's the current version. And I wanna leave it that way because I want all the updates that I make to my collection to be reflected in real time with that published documentation. So there's a real time sync if I'm only working off, if I'm only updating the current version rather. If I wanted to control how I roll out my changes, um, then I could fork this version, create a new feature branch, do my work, and then when I'm ready to, I can merge those updates to whatever version is public. Let's keep it current because we only want to work off of a real time sync in this case. And we were using an environment, so let me go ahead and select my environment to pair with my collection. I don't mind posting it on Postman's domain, but if I had a personal domain and wanted to publish the documentation on my personal domain, I would take one extra step to verify that domain. And here's the fun part, we get to style it. So there's a couple configuration options. Uh, you can choose your hex colors, but we'll leave this beautiful documentation styled in Postman colors and go ahead and hit publish collection. Okay, so Postman has generated this URL I could take this URL, send it to you at home, and you could access it. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so this looks very similar to what we were experiencing in Postman, just hosted on a web URL. So here's the two requests in our collection. Here's all that markdown formatted description. Here's that beautiful table. Here's that image of Twilio's console. And here's our example requests and responses. So that's what documentation looks like in Postman in the web. Let's see what it looks like in the Postman API network. Cause remember we took a look, we shared it to the Postman API network. So it's gonna take a little bit of time for your collection to be indexed in the Postman search. So I won't look for it there, but I will go to the explore tab. And this is where I can explore all the different public API network entities like collections. Let's go look under collections. And um, let's look under Salesforce. Salesforce has a ton of forks here. L must be very popular. So I click through and I'm in Salesforce's public workspace. Again, you can tell because of that globe icon. They have three collections and let's take a look at their documentation. Ooh, so they have these little icons that they're using to for callouts and disclaimers. They have a nice table as well. And of course, Salesforce is a pro. They have a get started because they want you to get started right away. Okay, so if I'm here browsing Salesforce's APIs and I find a request that I want to experiment with to test out in Postman, get async query info, for example, I go to the send button and I'm prompted to create a fork. Well, of course, Salesforce isn't going to let me mess around in their public AP, in their public workspace. I have to fork a version over to my own instance of Postman so that I can update parameters um, and enter my credentials and all that kind of stuff. And that's it. You can write documentation for your team, for the public, or for your future self. Check out more examples of API documentation in the Postman API network. And if you enjoyed this video, let's explore some other topics. <laughs>